What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who immediately told you they were losing, man. This is one of those instances where you can tell the feud is being set up and you just know. Well, they don't even have to say the words, you know, they're going to lose the match. You can kind of tell it's set up for them to lose the match. But, you know, they're going to try to uh, make you believe that it could possibly happen. So we're going to check out some of them instances where you just knew, all right, well, this is pretty much over. You know what I'm saying? This is not happening. But appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to a hundred, I said a hundred, 150 K. That's, that's the goal. Let's get right into this one. Wrestling matches are the ones that keep you guessing. And we can freak out as fans because we don't know what's going to happen. For Often sure. the story dictates what direction we must go in, however. And then one guy basically just tells you that, yep, they're screwed. Yeah. Okay, then. So I am Simon from What Culture. Please do smash that subscribe button. And this is 10 wrestlers who immediately told you they were losing. Number 10, James Storm. James Storm deserves a proper <clears> run <throat> at one of the big two companies. He's always smashed it no matter where he's been, but for one reason or another, aside from a brief run in NXT, <clears> it never happened. It should. What we're talking about today is when Storm was in TNA and Eric Bischoff was pulling the strings. As can be the way in business, those two didn't get on, leaving Bischoff to come out and say he thought James was unprofessional whenever he was told he was going to lose. Hmm. Because in a few interviews, Eric went as far to say you knew where the <coughs> cowboy was going to be defeated because go and watch his entrance and go look at his face. All the emotion was right there, and it took away from the finish. Now, I admit I have gone back and I've never noticed this, but I suppose wrestling is all about opinions. Mm -hmm. So make sure you look today, and then you can make your own flipping mind up. Number nine, Tony Storm. Very uh, interesting uh, interesting way to look at things. You know, maybe maybe he, you know, oh, yeah, I'm about to lose this match. No emotion come out to the ring. You can kind of tell if you're really looking that hard, but hard enough to see it. So I don't know. That. That can just be he, uh, he say, she say type situation there. Full Gear 2022. <laughs> Full Gear had to be good for AEW. All Out had its issues that we know about, so what better way to move past it by getting back to what counts? The wrestling. The promotion definitely achieved this, and Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm was a banger. Sorry, Taz. When people mm -hmm. started to say Storm looked like she was mad about this as soon as she walked down the rampway. Now, once again, I've looked at it and I don't see anything. Yeah. If anything, Tony just looks ready to destroy, but this is the power of hindsight. Sometimes it's legit, and sometimes we're seeing what we want to. For my money, I would bet Tony had been told the plan and that she would be turning heel after this, so wanted to plant some seeds. Anything you saw in her eyes was the rage building. Either way, Storm has been great ever since arriving in AEW. And long may that continue. Number seven, Thunder Rosa at Revel. It's crazy that uh, <laughs> we're talking about this. There's been some definite issues with the, the women in AEW right now, so... Uh, I don't really have the full details on it, but I've been seeing some some rumblings on uh, social medias of the potential issues, the backstage issues uh, the women's division has been uh, seeing in AEW. So it's interesting that <laughs> some of these women are showing up, especially Thunder Rosa and how that played out in the end, too. Evolution 2022. Eight months prior to this, we have a copy and paste situation. Everybody was saying the same damn thing about Thunder Rosa. She was facing Britt Baker at Revolution 2022 for the women's title. And given this was coming off the crazy lights out match, people were pumped. The two had great chemistry. As soon as Thunder arrived, though, people say she looked pissed off. But once more, I didn't see it that way. I don't know. She just looked ready to kick her rival's ass and let's face it. There was an argument this was the time to make the switch. As John Cena once said, the time is now. Ultimately, <laughs> they had another top scrap until all the craziness happened a few months later. But as always, mm -hmm. please do remember that first and foremost, these are human beings. Treat them as nice as you can. Number seven, Kevin Owens at Fastlane 2017. Oh, man. Now, I'm sure Kevin Owens was pretty pumped up to face Bill Goldberg. <laughs> Say what you will, but imagine growing up on the Attitude Era and then facing one of the most popular guys from that period. Yeah. It must be surreal. Oh, the brother. only issue at Fastlane 2017 was that Owens was the Raw World Champion and had barely got going. He was also ready for an excellent feud with Chris Jericho yeah. over the title. But when Bill crushed him at the pay-per-view... Well, it felt a little short-sighted. The upcoming Goldberg and Brock Lesnar program also didn't need gold on the line. And there was a slight inkling that maybe, just maybe, Kevin was a little bummed about it. You would be, however, especially because KO hasn't been the champion since. Yeah. We do need... Yeah, I... Once again, kind of to his point, their match didn't need a title. It did not... I would have preferred a Jericho... 
a Y2J feud um, for the title at Mania than the match that we got. That's just my personal opinion. I would have preferred that. But, you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> need to change that as well, please, because it's been years. Literally, all I'm going to ask you today, WWE, is to make him the man again. Thank you very much. Number six, Jake Roberts at WrestleMania 8. A year prior to this, The Undertaker destroyed Jimmy Snooker to start his undefeated streak. Mm -hmm. We knew this was an undefeated streak at the time because it wasn't part of the plan, but still, when we got to WrestleMania 8, we did it again. This time, Jake Roberts was the victim, which made a lot of sense because he was very much a WWF veteran. And everybody liked this, apart from Jake. Bringing oh. it out backstage and looking frustrated as he came to the ring, Roberts even glared into the camera at one point and basically acknowledged that this wasn't going to go his way. Not sure he cared that much about breaking the fourth wall. Behind the scenes, Jake was also telling Vince McMahon he was so angry that he wasn't going to show up to future events, and because of that, he got released. Whoa. Vince McMahon was not pleased, and we wouldn't see him again for four years in a World Wrestling Federation ring. Whoops. Number five, Dean Damn, Amber. bro. He didn't want to do the job for The Undertaker. Damn. He said, man, this sucks. <laughs> I ain't coming back. Vince was like, all right, well, bye, nigga. <laughs> Damn. 32. Well, we know this one is true. Mm -hmm. Now Rose has talked about it. Yeah. But now John Moxley has said that he wasn't all that enthused with his Brock Lesnar match. Because the Beast didn't really put a lot of effort into their no hold barred scrap. This should have been fact, so much like better. He was ready to have his ass kicked. Brock wouldn't even do that. You can see Ambrose is... Yeah, no, nah, and that's the crazy thing. Ambrose was all about, hey, bro, you can do whatever you want to me. I don't give a damn, bro. Let's just put on an entertaining show. Anything he tried to do, Brock was like, no, don't want to do it. No, don't care. Nah, don't want to do it. And what's crazy is I was actually interested in this feud. I was, because Ambrose was just this guy that just didn't care how much punishment you inflicted on him, he was going to find a way to get back up. They built him like this ultimate underdog, this crazed underdog. And I was enjoy I was ready for this feud, this match. And come to find out, Brock didn't want to do nothing. And it's crazy because when Brock wants to do something, as we've seen with SummerSlam, him going off script and <laughs> shaking Cody's hand and acknowledging him as the, the next guy up or whatever. He'll do it. He will. He will give it up 200% if he's interested in doing it. This, he was not interested in doing anything Dean Ambrose had to come up with. Frustrations here even more so when you know the story. Yeah. And yeah, while on paper this was highly anticipated, it was a bit of a letdown on the night because nothing happened. Nothing. Lesnar just beat him a little bit and we were done. It was worse as Brock was going to win even though he was headed back to the UFC, leaving Dean to kind of tread water for a while wonder at the end of his wwe deal he was so annoyed i don't think they really knew what they had yeah well, john cena at wrestlemania 27 now i think this was john cena just trying to sell the moment after a huge over-the-top entrance out he came mm -hmm. but rather than his usual energetic self he was sort of a little bit somber more serious maybe it was interesting he of course was taking on the miz in a match he was going to lose but i don't think that's the deal I would guess that maybe it comes down to The Rock. Because although we didn't know it here, Cena yeah. and Dwayne Johnson had real beef for a good while, and the ending of the match called for the Great One to screw over Cena, allowing Miz to retain the WWE title. It was a genuine shock. Given that John's yeah. point was going to be that he's in the trenches every week, whereas the Great One picked and chose his moments, maybe he was a little bit peeved at this. It was like getting murked by two people. They still did business, and we know the deal there. Mm -hmm. But do go back and watch this when you can. I actually think this one could be argued. The three, Kenny Omega at Wrestle. That's possible. But I, I don't, only reason why I, I could counter that point is John's always been a company guy. John's always going to do, you know, what's best for the company. And if Vince wants him to do something, John Cena's going to do it. That's, that's just John. He's loyal to them. He will always be loyal to them. So I, once I'm sure he found out that was going to happen, maybe he had some some issues about it but i'm sure he saw the bigger picture of what they were setting so for kingdom 13. so i am gonna argue with myself here because there is just no way the only reason mr omega gets in here is because it gets chatted about online but i don't believe it 
That man gets wrestling too much. It was an interesting time for sports entertainment, though, as just before this pay-per-view, a certain promotion called AEW had been announced, mm -hmm. which, of course, Kenny had signed with. So essentially, he was going to be taking some time away from New Japan. The twist was Omega being the IWGP heavyweight <laughs> That champion, outfit is so wild, bro. That out, which surely meant he had to drop the belt to Tanahashi at the pay-per-view. Or did he? We didn't know. The answer was yes, which led some people to say Omega looked rattled during his entrance, or because this was a last minute decision, conversations were being had right up to the bell ring. Even if that was the case though, I still think Kenny would do the best he could, yeah. and any interesting facials were likely intentional. That way you get the world talking. He also did mouth one last time into the camera. So seriously, man, I think he knew what he was doing because he always does. Number two, hmm. Jonathan Gresham. This is the point. Dishonor, 2022. So another one where everything would come to light soon afterwards. Jonathan Gresham was not overly pleased that he was dropping the Ring of Honor world title to Claudio Castagnoli soon after Tony Khan bought the promotion. This seemed like it was mostly down to the fact that Gresham had tried to put the company on his back through some difficult times. Then all of a sudden, poof, it was all gone. We mm. also learned about a very heated conversation between the two where Jonathan could actually be heard yelling at Khan. But recently, Gresham came out and explained this and admitted that at the time, he was in a bad position personally. So ultimately, he did let this all get to his head and he acted unprofessionally. The oh. best part is, Gresham and Tony Khan are now the best of friends once more and we don't have to worry about it. Still, oh, no, really time he walked out to face Claudio and didn't even have his usual ring entrance attire on, you kind of get the feeling... He just wanted to get this done and get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. One Ric Flair and anytime he wore red. <laughs> this is somewhat of a... We just talked about this too. Charlotte Flair had on a, a whole red outfit and guess what? She didn't win. We literally just talked about this for SummerSlam. Oh, that's so, that's funny. <laughs> I've been planning on checking out this video. It's been on my list of videos to check out. So it's just a, that's, that's a random coincidence there. <laughs> Open secret and nobody has disproved it as of yet. Because if Ric Flair was going to lose an important match, he would don red wrestling gear. I mean, every damn time. <laughs> this was true at WrestleMania 8 when he lost to the Macho Man Randy Savage, when he tasted defeat courtesy of Ricky Steamboat at the Chai Town Rumble in 1999, and when he got pinned at Mania 19 against The Undertaker. That's if anybody crazy. had caught on to this back in the day, it must have totally ruined the outcome, although there were exceptions. When he retired for the first time as he battled Shawn Michaels at Mania 24, he was actually wearing blue. blue. Next time you're bored, though, definitely go and do the maths, because I tell you, you'll be surprised how many times this comes through the hell was the nature boy thinking no the other rest that's who crazy told you bro. they were losing please do let us know that is funny y'all literally talked about this on the uh, summer slam stream every time uh rick wore red he lost charlotte wore red she lost <laughs> she didn't win the triple threat oh that's that's crazy <laughs> i don't know man what I don't know. That's that's a very interesting one, man. But comment down below. Let me know some other instances where you knew. You just knew the wrestler was losing. Just just off of the entrance alone or how things were built. You just already knew. Yeah, this person is about to lose. They're not about to win. But appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.